making local action count in the global goal on adaptation is important because adaptation is fundamentally different from mitigation for mitigation we have a clear goal which is measurable uh, that is to keep temperatures down to 1.5 degrees centigrade or lower for the world adaptation is different in the sense that it is fundamentally uh, different for different countries populations context uh and needs to be measured differently across uh capacities uh vulnerabilities agencies and transformations across these various geographies we need to change that divide or barrier where community data sometimes is questioned to say is this really data that can be used because it was not collected by maybe say professor so and so the systematic measurement of the adaptation you know successes and failures are not happening particularly we need the action research particularly you know data uh, collecting the local knowledge as also you know the blending of the local knowledge and the science based knowledge you know science and technology together well-being goes beyond economic growth or economic income uh, and therefore uh, needs to take into account various aspects of a human life uh, human beings are not just economic beings who depend on incomes but are dependent on trust and communities and and uh, association with place and identity and um, cultures and a lot more health education a lot more that's comparable but also and tangible but also intangible in terms of uh, the richness of life that people live and uh, adaptation needs to be measured in all these aspects the process of co-creating you know locally led adaptation metrics is very important working together with the communities to identify what are the most important issues what are the factors what do they want to see as uh, you know uh, you know successful adaptation young people they have what they call the no use city tv and they go out there and they collect stories about the challenges in their communities about the solutions because often we only hear of the negative side of what's happening in poor settlements but they also gather the information about their the positives that are happening within their communities so we are looking at um, uh, risk mapping Uh, we are looking at data collection with that climate so initially we used to look at how many communities are actually in a threat of evictions yeah by land grabbers by the city by road construction but now we are also looking at how many communities are actually vulnerable uh, uh, to climate change phenomena how many are in the river riparian yeah? so we are doing all that risk mapping through the data we collect and probably somebody coming to evaluate to assess there are things that you cannot see eh? but there are things for us we are able to measure we were from this point last year when it rained uh, actually 30 houses were, 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 were washed away by the river but this year from the efforts that we are able to do the interventions actually this year there is no house which has been washed by the floods a lot of the assessment frameworks are project driven uh, they are designed uh, by projects uh, based on the expected outputs that these projects would want to deliver but certainly uh, this leaves out a lot of aspirations uh, that the communities uh, have in terms of what do they consider a successful adaptation what do they consider as important in terms of uh, uh, intervention 
But I think that one of the key contributions that the Global Goal on Adaptation makes to local-led adaptation is by beginning to set some targets and some frameworks that can help to you know, consolidate local actions and help to inform um, uh, you know, some of the aspirations at the local level.